When the president says, we will hunt you down and make you pay, what does that look like? Is he going to order a mission to kill the people responsible, or would he be satisfied if they are captured and brought to trial? Uh, I think he made clear yesterday that he does not want them to live on the earth anymore. Uh, okay. And as the, as the U.S. is coordinating with the Taliban about security for the next couple days, I, some of the people running security for the Taliban in Kabul are terrorists with millions of dollars worth of bounties on their heads. Are we going to try to bring those known terrorists to justice before we leave the country? Peter, I think our focus right now is on doing everything we can to get the remaining American citizens who want to depart out of the country, to get our Afghan partners out of the country. As I just said in response to Phil's question, this is uh, not a preferred relationship or uh, a situation that we would have designed if we had started from scratch. I think that's very clear. But right now, we need to continue to coordinate. Uh, that's our focus for the next couple of days. And the last one, you said that you think we're going to have a great deal of leverage over the Taliban after we leave. You think we're going to have more leverage with no troops on the ground in Afghanistan than we do with thousands of troops on the ground in Afghanistan? Well, to be clear, one of the steps that the President directed his Secretary of State to take, which was in my statement this morning, was to engage with our international partners to determine what the path forward looks like. And there are key components here. The Taliban are going to want a functioning airport. So do we. Uh, there's an enormous amount of economic leverage that the global community has. Uh, that's something we need to work with our international partners on. As we have more to update you on, we will update you on it. To those who carried out this attack, as well as anyone who wishes America harm, know this. We will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. There's not been a U.S. service member killed in combat in Afghanistan since February of 2020. You set a deadline, you pulled troops out, you sent troops back in, and now 12 Marines are dead. You said the buck stops with you. Do you bear any responsibility for the way that things have unfolded in the last two weeks? I bear responsibility for fundamentally all that's happened of late. But here's the deal. You know, I wish you'd one day say these things, you know as well as I do that a former president made a deal with the Taliban that he would get all American forces out of Afghanistan by May 1. In return, the commitment was made, and that was a year before. In return, he was given a commitment that the Taliban would continue to attack others, but would not attack any American forces. Remember that? I'm, I'm being serious. I, no, I, I'm asking you a question. Be, uh, because before... No, 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 wait a minute. I'm asking you a question. Is that, is that accurate, the best of you or not? What? I think they have an issue that people are likely to get hurt. Some, as we've seen, have gotten killed, and that it is messy. The reason why, whether my friend will acknowledge it or has reported it, the reason why there were no attacks on Americans, as you said, from the date until I came into office, was because the commitment was made by President Trump, I will be out by May 1st. In the meantime, you agree not to attack any Americans. That was the deal. That's why no American was attacked. And you said you still, uh, a few days ago, you said you squarely stand by your decision to pull out. Yes, I do, because look at it this way, folks. And I'm going to, I have another meeting for real. But imagine where we'd be if I had indicated on May the 1st, I was not going to renegotiate an evacuation date, we were going to stay there. I'd have only one alternative, pour thousands of more troops back into Afghanistan to fight a war that we had already won relative to why the reason we went in the first place. I have never been of the view 
that we should be sacrificing American lives to try to establish a democratic government in Afghanistan, a country that has never once in its entire history been a united country and is made up — I don't mean this in a derogatory — made up of different tribes who have never, ever, ever gotten along with one another. And so, as I said before, and this is the last comment I'll make, we'll have more chance to talk about this, unfortunately, beyond, because we're not out yet. If Osama bin Laden, as well as al-Qaeda, had chosen to launch an attack when they left Saudi Arabia out of Yemen, would we have ever gone to Afghanistan? Even though the Taliban completely controlled Afghanistan at the time, would we have ever gone? I know it's not fair to ask you questions. It's rhetorical. But raise your hand if you think we should have gone and given up thousands of lives and tens of thousands of wounded. Our interest in going was to prevent al-Qaeda from reemerging, first to get bin Laden, wipe out al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, prevent that from happening again. As I've said a hundred times, terrorism is metastasized around the world. We have greater threats coming out of other countries, a heck of a lot closer to the United States. We don't have military encampments there. We don't keep people there. We have over the horizon capability to keep them from going after us. Ladies and gentlemen, it was time to end a 20-year war. Thank you so much.